Hello everybody. So it's finally October. It's fall, the best time of the year. And the reason I say it's the best time of the year is because it gets cooler, but not too cold. And horror movies become a thing again. Everybody remembers horror movies all of a sudden, even though I've never stopped watching them through the year. But Halloween is right around the corner, and I figured that it would be a perfect time to talk about one of my favorite or newly minted favorite fall movies, and that is The Guest. Mrs. Peterson? Can I um, help you? My name is David. So fall is the time of year where I decide to watch basically a horror movie every day, which isn't out of bounds, really. I watch horror movies almost every day anyway, and it's my preferred genre. But in fall or October time of year, I like to re-watch some horror movies that I love. The Thing, The Shining, The Mist, The Wailing, The Guest, lots of movies with the in the title. But The Guest is a movie that I'd only seen once up until very recently. And when I rewatched it, I liked it even more. This is a movie that has a bit of a reputation around it for being a quite polarizing film. And after my first watch, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I thought it was interesting. It played on some things that I didn't expect it to. But on a second watch, I really expected it to get worse. I, I thought that it would not be nearly as enjoyable or entertaining because the mystery would be gone. Now, for those of you that don't know, the story of the film is about Dan Stevens, 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 or the guest, the titular guest. He goes to a house of a person that he was in combat with in the military and tries to help this the family of that guy. And that's essentially the story. He just goes to a house to help a family. That's the log line of this film in the most simplistic way possible. And slowly as the film goes on, you kind of learn that he may be not as he seems, which is a very stereotypical plot for a horror movie. And this film knows exactly that. This is a homage to 80s type movies, 80s slashers, 80s home invasion movies, and it is a parody or satire of those films. Now, this is where most people that don't like it tend to have the most beef with this movie, is in that it is a homage to the 80s. It's a satire of the 80s home invasion type movies, the movies in this vein. A lot of people that dislike this movie discount this element of it and say it is just one of those bad movies. This movie has a lot of over-the-top sequences, over-the-top sound effects, over-the-top action, over-the-top music. Everything about it is over-the-top but grounded in a reality. where the twist comes in is that Dan Stevens, the guest, he's genuinely there to help. And that's sort of where the satirical elements of the film come in. A lot of people discount this movie saying that they wanted to parody these sh schlocky horror movies from a bygone era by just making one of those movies. And a lot of people say that there isn't anything satirical about it because it is simply just one of those movies. It doesn't do anything better or worse than those movies. It just is one. But I completely disagree. The main thrust of the story is that Dan Stevens is genuinely there to help this main family. He goes to this family because he promised their son who died that he would help them. And he does help them in the only way he knows how. He is a military man who all he knows is killing and all he knows is combat. So the way he helps this family is by doing those things. Well, maybe you prefer this. And that's where the satirical edge comes in. The first act of the film, this movie is a tight 90 minutes. So the first 20 minutes, first 25 minutes, the first act is Dan Stevens working with this family and individually seeing 
where their issues are and how we can help them. So on a first watch, it plays as if you're just getting to know the characters through Dan Stevens as sort of the catalyst for the audience. But on a second watch, it kind of completely shifts. It's pulling double duty in that you are getting to know the main characters of this family, but simultaneously you're seeing what Dan Stevens is doing because you already know the twists in that he's trying to help them. So you can see that he is individually going to each one of these characters in this family and saying, okay, how can I help this person specifically? And it makes it so much more fun and enjoyable to see that. And on a second watch, the movie gets a lot more funny. I can't believe how much I was laughing in the second watch of this film. I was laughing hysterically at points, more than in most comedies. What happened? Uh, this kid called me a faggot. So I uh, broke a yardstick on his face. Okay. Awesome. Knowing the twist of it, knowing the satirical edge of it, it just makes it so much more funny. It's a black comedy, it always was, but now that knowing what that is going in, it's just so much better. And I love that you watch him go individually to all these people, and not only is it setting everything up, setting locations up, setting characters up, setting the tone, it, it, he is basically revealing his hand very early on, but nobody can see it because he's just this charming southern accent dude that's just there to hell. You killed my parents. I did. Yes. Dan Stevens. I think he is fantastic in this, and I think he ad actually carries a lot of this movie because he is that charming kind of guy. He's there to, he's nice, he's there to help people, he genuinely seems interested in these people's lives, and he goes out of his way to be helpful. And that's the funny thing, is that in a movie like this, where you have a sinister main character infecting this family, you know from the get-go that this character is gonna be the antagonist. You know that he's just trying to find the weaknesses that he can exploit, or he's just there to hurt them in some way. The Strangers comes to mind where people invade their house and then kill them just because they were home. Whereas in this one, a man invades the house to help them. And that's, again, that's where that edge comes in, and Dan Stevens perfectly captures it, because he is that super charming dude, and when you know that he genuinely is there just to help, even knowing what it turns into in the third act, you like him. You actually kind of like this character, because the first watch, you're, you're wanting to know where it's going, you're trying to solve the mystery of this character, you're trying to solve where, where the film is going, what it's trying to do, what it's trying to say, and once you know what this character is, then it, it makes it so much easier to connect with him, to, to like him. And that's sort of the cornerstone of the movie. If that hinge didn't work, the movie would fall apart. If you don't like Dan Stevens, the movie doesn't work. I find a solitary head golden still I reminisce I'm haunted even though I really do like Dan Stevens in this and I really like his character, the other characters in this aren't exactly well developed or particularly interesting and that's one of my criticisms of it. All the characters in this, aside from him, are basically just there to serve a function, which is fine, but at a certain point it, it would have been nice to have Micah Monroe be more of a character than she is. She's basically just the MacGuffin of the movie. She's the one that sets everything in motion, trying to figure out who he is. So she's nothing more than just a cynical teenage girl who doesn't believe that Dan Stevens as, is as nice as he seems to be. So that's all her character is. And then the son of this family is just the kind of outcast kid who gets beat up by bullies and then the two parents aren't really around, which is another trope of 80s movies. But each one of them, 
has something that Dan Stevens latches onto that he helps them with, and it actually makes them kind of have an arc near the end of the movie. Each character almost has an arc, except for the parents, because again, they're just not around. Um, but the dad, he, Dan Stevens kills the dad's boss so that the dad can get a promotion, and that's how he helps him. And then the son is getting bullied, so he teaches him to not take it and just beat the crap out of them if need be. You did the right thing. And everybody dies, and that's essentially the third act. Pretty much everybody dies except the main two kids. Um, and you get this wonderful scene near the end where the main um, younger brother who gets bullied uh, finally stands up for himself, and it's amazing. This ending really cements the black comedy in it for me. So many people can say that they don't know maybe how to feel about it, they don't know if it's supposed to be a dark movie, if it's supposed to be a funny movie, if it's supposed to be legitimately like intense or action-packed. And for me, it's that, that end scene where Dan Steve D Stevens, I don't know why I keep mispronouncing his name, it's so easy, gives the kid a thumbs up, maybe one of the funniest things I've seen in any movie, it is hysterical because Dan Stevens, again, he's just there to help. So when the kid uses what he taught him against himself, he can't help but say, I don't blame you. Don't feel bad. And it completely seals the movie for me. It's one of the best endings to a movie I've seen, really. I absolutely love how it ends. But, like I said, I have a couple criticisms, the characters being one. I think the middle chunk of the movie does get a little bit slow, a little bit tedious, because it is following Micah Monroe, who is trying to figure out who Dan Stevens is, and it gets a little bland, mainly because you just don't really care for her as a character. She's so cynical to the point of her being kind of unlikable, so following her as she's trying to figure him out is, especially on a second watch, it's just not that interesting to me. Uh, the third act I love, the first act I love, and chunks of the middle act I think are pretty great, but there are, it, it does have the problem of having a lull in the middle where they didn't quite know how to connect acts one and three without getting a little bit exposition heavy and getting a little bit too expl explanatory. So other than that, I think it's great. I think it goes just far enough into being a satirical movie without being a stylistic satire to be interesting. It's, it's incredibly fun to watch. The action is, is entertaining. It is very over the top. It's very goofy. It's very funny. And I absolutely love Dan Stevens in this, and the synthwave score is great, and the satirical edge to it is very unique. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I really enjoy it.